Hey guys, Deborah with Punching Pesos here, and it's time for They Paid What? Sales update video. Um, so this is gonna be the whole month of May. So go ahead and like get your snacks and something to drink and um, you know, get ready to sit down for a minute because it's gonna be all the things. Um, the month of May was actually fairly good. Um I had a total sales numbers of $3,098, and my profit came in at $1,585. My profit is generally, if you've been watching these videos, um, normally always half of what my sales are, and once again, it was right about half. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. eBay came in at a total of $2,606.88 in sales and shipping. Um, with a profit of $1,331, so almost exactly half. Pretty good. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into what sold. Oh, I didn't go all the way back. Look, look at all those tabs. Look. Go get the tabs. Scroll the tabs. That's a lot of tabs. Okay. So let's go ahead and get going here. Um, the very first item I sold in May was this Canon high capacity ink cartridge. Uh, it was new in the packaging. It um came from the Goodwill computer store for five dollars. Um, let me make sure I didn't have those on sale. No, full price. Next thing that sold was a part to the Cuisinart Smart Power Duet. I always pick these up if I see them, if they're a decent price. If they're $6, like $6.99 or less. Because sometimes those stores get a little crazy with the Cuisinart. I don't know if they've been pre-programmed that Cuisinart is a brand that is worth a lot of money. Um, which it is, but uh, these little choppers, man, sometimes the mini choppers, they can get those things priced pretty high. Um, I only pick them up, like I said, if they're $6.99 or less, but you can sell each one of the parts for $10, $14, $12. And, um, what's sold on this one was the just the bowl cover went for $18.95. And it's like this big. It's tiny. I uh, went for $18.95 plus shipping. Uh, this Black & Decker Space Maker uh, toaster oven was one of those yay! Oh, yay again! Moments. Um, because I got it and then when I got to researching it, I was like, oh no, there was a recall. And a lot of these space maker items will have recalls. You need to make sure and check. Okay. If you're going to sell appliances, you need to check. Um, just put in the item and the word recall in Google check and make sure you're not going to set somebody's house on fire. So um, it was part of a recall. However, my toaster oven was the one that they made to fix the recall problem. Yay! So I had it listed for like a day. And uh, it sold for, I believe, full asking price. Yep, $129 plus shipping. It went up to Canada. So they paid $60 to, well, I'm sorry. Is that right? $60? I'm normally very good at mental math. I can do mental math like that, but right now, um, my brain's not feeling that great today. So, um, yeah, 60 bucks. That should have been easy. Boy, I paid, I paid $4.99 for that. I think that's what I paid for it. Let me look. It was unbelievable. I've been trying to make these things bigger for people that have been requesting it so that they can see what I got here. $7.99 is what I paid for that baby. $7.99 at Savers. I bought it April the 19th and then I had it sitting around for about a week trying to figure out if it was recalled or what was up with it. Okay. 
Well, that didn't work. Next thing. So, uh, I always, I love Space Maker stuff. They're like my favorite. Uh, I had bought this Joker Funhouse game, and if you find it, I think it went for a decent rate over on Amazon, but when I got this one home, um, it was missing piece. So I went ahead and parted it out and I sold, I paid $2.99 for the game and I sold just the spinner for $4.95 plus shipping. I think that's great. Also sold another game piece. Um, I had sold previously other pieces of this game. Um, already the little movers tokens and some of the cards and money i think uh this was one of the last pieces um just the board went for 8.95 and stuck it in an envelope and sent it on its day sent it on its way um 2.99 for the game and then each one of the parts pieces i they were six seven eight nine dollars so this came in a pack that was actually like somebody had bought it from amazon and then never used it and just like donated it because it was this and like two filters, like small filters that they had packaged together and priced them. I believe it was $4.99. So it was three things in there. So this sold for $12.95 free shipping. It was really light, just went in the box and it was eight ounces. Microderm needle body roller. Okay, this came out of the um palette rejects and um it sold fairly quickly what ended up happening is is i accidentally had this item listed twice under two different names i had started um trying to work through some stuff when i would find it when i was doing research i would save it as a draft and then when i was going to actually list i would go back into that draft well i guess i had created a listing and then didn't realize I had created that listing and started working through the same stuff again. Um, and I listed it twice, like with two different names. So the very first one went out. And then the second order that I had, I actually had to buy one from another seller. So I didn't lose any money at all. Um, theirs was priced $2 less than mine. So I didn't lose any money and the customer got it quickly. So it was a great seller. And, um, the buyer left me really good feedback so it actually belonged to the other seller that sent it out i had to have somebody drop ship it for me uh this was the cuisinart that i was actually going to part out but since it was new with just the damaged box i went ahead and went against my normal parting outness and just decided to do it all together it's just easier to send one thing than five. So I decided to do it all together and it sold pretty quickly. Um, I paid, I know I paid up for this. I think it was $9.99 or $7.99. What's the convection oven? I didn't enter it in. I know it was like in the $9.99, $7.99 range. Um, but I sold it for $39.95 plus shipping. So even at $9.99, that's still a decent profit. And it was a quick turnaround. I bought a Sony photo printer that was new in the box. But it was like the box was just like all jacked up. If, I don't know. Fry's Electronics isn't a very... It's a nationwide brand, but they have not a lot of locations. And Fry's... Sometimes their boxes of electronics are just beat to crap. And uh, this one was also. Uh, it had the little fry sticker on it and had everything, but it was like, it just looked awful. But everything in it was new. But the actual printer itself just doesn't sell for anything. It was like somebody had pillaged the box for the ink, I think. And then everything else was new. Um, so I went ahead and parted the whole thing out and did the paper tray. And I think power cord or something and um the printer itself this actually went to spain and they paid heavily in shipping let's see yeah it was 8.95 and then the total that they paid for this was 22.45 so they paid about 13 a little over 13 dollars in shipping 
but you know, if you have that printer and that's what you use, you're going to need that paper tray or you're not going to be putting on any pictures. Um, and that's generally what I do with items that I thought were complete or I thought they were going to be different. Um, I'll just part them out because parting out things is just so simple. And I'm going to be talking about that tonight um, with Chris, the walking picker of uh, how I got, got back into parts and my new business model that's coming up. So that's, we'll be talking about that tonight uh, if I can finish this video in time. That's why I'm trying to speed through this. We got, I, I had 102 things I sold last month. So um, next thing I purchased I was, I paid $4.99 for this at the Goodwill computer store. It's just one of the little wireless USB adapters for your laptops to turn them in to, uh, to have wireless internet. And um, is that how you spell cellophane? I couldn't send it to Amazon because the cellophane was ripped. So I went ahead and made that the main gallery picture of the actual ripped cellophane and just went on about my day. Um, I think that's sold on sale. Yeah, it went on sale from when I was running a 40% off sale, which I'm actually doing right now. Uh, I just started it. It might not even be in effect yet because I think I forgot to set it back the two hours. Um, I just put 51 items on sale for 40% off. Uh, and I did that quite a bit in May and it worked out swimmingly because you can see my sales were definitely up. My sales were up 56% at one point um, over the previous 30 days. Here's another game that I parted out just because it didn't sell as well as I thought it was going to. So I just went ahead and parted out the pieces. I've sold the tokens, I believe, um, already. and um, some of the game cards like the property cards this was the money uh $3.95 plus shipping is not bad on something i paid $2.99 for and i also had multiple other listings doing a, a parts listing takes no time at all the other day um i was timing it and i had it took me 30 minutes to do the pictures of nine different items and it took me 18 minutes to do the listings for those nine items so Two minutes of listing is not bad. This Advocare I got in a uh, silent auction that I won and I spent $52 on all of the items and it was like this health gift care kit and it came with a six month Gold's, member, Gold's Gym membership and which I didn't even need because I totally forgot I have a YMCA membership. Um, and then all these other snack things and a towel and a blender bottle and this thing of Advocare. I had no idea those things are $50 a jar. So I went ahead and sold the Advocare so that way I could get my money back on the item that I shouldn't have bought. But I just got way too competitive because there was this other lady bidding against me. And I was just like, you're a jerk. And so I went back over like in the last 30 seconds of the auction and up to the price. It ended up costing me 52 bucks, But I won. So boom <laughs> yeah, but if you ever see this Advocare stuff like somebody's got it at a garage sale or something like you know maybe they used to be a pick it up i finally sold some star wars cookie cutters i have had this one set for what seemed like a lifetime and then i picked up the uh faces the people one uh, not that long ago and I decided to put them as a lot together and I thought maybe I might actually sell them and they finally sold um they went on sale for $23.97 plus shipping not a huge profit on those I was just so happy they were gone because I had had those other cookie cutters forever I will never buy those again um, I have a set, I have another set, and I'm going to put it together with the pancake set that I have. It's Star Wars Pancake Maker. I'm going to put the cookie set and the pancake maker together and see if I can get rid of those. Because those cookie cutters, I thought they would sell, but they totally do not. Next up. Uh, I put a variation listing for the Mr. Coffee Frappe Maker. I have been accumulating a couple of them and I had one of my own that I don't use. Um, so the blender jars alone, just, just this part right here, this one, 
the jar. Sells for $24.95. Um, free shipping. It ships um, first class in a box, I believe. It might not. It might go priority. I don't remember. Let me take a looky-see. Uh, selling. Oh, let me make this bigger for you guys. Bigger. Bigger so you can see anything. If I make it bigger, I can't see anything. Can I? I can't see. I think I made it too big. Let me scroll back. Okay. Um, frappe. Okay, so the frappe part... I sold it for, I'm going to have to make this smaller, I can't see, $24.95. My cost on it is about $2.50 if I divide it up by parts. Um, shipped out priority mail for $7.91, PayPal fees and everything else. I made a net profit of $11.27 on that blender jar, just on the jar. I've also sold the lid. and another jar so hey I'm on it and I just replenished that variation listing with another whole machine because I had bought one for $13.99 at Salvation Army which was I paid up for that baby and I thought it was new and when I got it opened up it looked like they had used it about one time it had water spots in it and so it wasn't new I went ahead and parted it out because it sells for much more money parted out than it does whole. I also found out today that if you use variation listings instead of individual sell similar listings, because um, <clears throat> I, I do that because it helps in search, because each one of the names of your variations is an added keyword search and it comes up organically and I have a video if you'll um, search in my channel uh, variation listing I have a video showing you how to do it and why it's important to do it and then I found out another benefit of doing variation listings today is that you can promote them so if I only took that one machine and made individual listings for each one of the parts I wouldn't be able to do promoted listings on one individual item they don't allow that it has to be multi quantity well the variation listing is considered a multi quantity so even though I only have individual items that one listing it can actually be promoted so that's another benefit of a variation listing as opposed to doing individual ones sold another one of the bags $8.95 these are little travel bags this would be a really good thing to purchase um, from Alibaba if you um, I got these as palette rejects but if you uh, want to just give it a shot and try out Alibaba for the first time um, this would be a safe purchase if you could get them for you know less than a dollar a piece um, you know and buy you know if they'll let you buy a smaller quantity like uh, 50 or 100 I think it would be a safe buy to um, purchase these little organizers I sell one like every week and um, at $8.95 they go in a bag, they ship at a four ounce rate, so it's 260 to ship it out. And I mean, it's just kind of an easy uh, feedback filler and also just sales number quantity wise because you need that to help stabilize your, um, your rankings. So uh, this came out of the Palette Rejects. I had a couple of them. Uh, this one sold for $14.95 plus shipping. I put a, a cost on that of about $2. Uh, Cranium Caribou is a really great game to buy to sell the parts. Um, I The key, the jewel, and the balls, they're all going to sell. So if you see Caribou, you can feel free to pick it up. You know, if it's a decent price, $2.99 is a good price, $2.99 or less. Um, you can sell the key for $12.95. You can sell the little ball that goes in the treasure chest, the jewel. You can sell it for $9.95, and you can sell the balls for $12.95. So that's, what, $35 in um, sales on a $2.99 game that you can't even sell for $10 if you tried to sell it. So Unless it's new. If it's new, don't open it. Put it on Amazon. 
Uh, this came out of the Palette Rejects. This was Tattoo Kit. Um, this was when I posted over in the $1,500 room. I had got this box into a flat rate padded envelope, and it looked like hell. But the customer wanted the cheapest, fastest they could get, and flat rate padded envelope was the way to go. And they were happy they got it. And it left me great feedback. This is one of the only pairs of high heels I have ever sold because I don't buy them. But these were absolutely gorgeous that I just couldn't not buy these. Um, they had the red bottoms and they just had this really nice design and I just thought they were so nice. Uh, I took a best offer on them of $24 plus shipping and my customer was very happy with them I was really happy with the results that they sold I only paid $6.99 for them and um, this is one of the things that I suggest that if you have something like this I typically do not encourage putting adjectives the only time I encourage putting adjectives are on things that um, are like apparel because I know whenever I'm searching for items I don't know the specific brand that I'm looking for I just know the size and kind of what I'm looking for I look for cute kids clothes I look for sexy shoes I look for date night shirts I look for those I not you know maybe I'm not the typical buyer I don't know maybe the typical buyer does search that way because I know every time I put some type of adjective in my title it helps the sales so if you've got a party dress put it as a party dress if it's for the beach if it's for you know put those things in your title because people don't know what they want exactly they're just browsing and if you've got a nice gallery photo that sticks out at them they're gonna buy your item because while somebody else is putting you know long sleeve button up blah 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 their customer might be searching for business exec attire or office or work those kind of words um i bought a whole cuisinart food processor i paid not enough for it i know that i know it was really cheap i think i paid 9.95 for it at savers and I put individual listings for each one this one the customer bought it she sent me a message saying it didn't fit down here I don't know why it does this on um Firefox because I do have the description entered here but it for some reason on Firefox it doesn't show but down here, I did have all of the, let me see if it'll have it on this side. Nope. I had all the item specifics. I had every um, model that this particular one was uh, compatible with. And she sent me a message saying that it didn't fit. So I simply sent her a message asking, what model do you have? Because in the listing, it clearly states that this fits these models. And she never responded. So my guess is that she probably bought the wrong thing, um, didn't check to make sure that the model was the right one, and you know didn't want to go through the trouble of sending it back since it was her mistake and she'd have to pay for return shipping. That's my thoughts. I'm not sure. But I had this Needlepoint uh, cross-stitch kit for quite a while. I paid about a dollar for them. They all had come in a bag. Um, so it went for $13.95 free shipping. This is another piece to that Cuisinart machine. These sold really quickly. $19.95 for a little stem. That's amazing. This is why I love parts. This was a bad buy. Uh, I didn't look these up. I thought that it just was going to be a good buy. I bought these and I bought a set of... Um, what were they? Snoopy or... 
something that I thought was gonna be collectible or somebody would have really wanted them, you know, Wizard of Oz is kind of classic, and I, I didn't look them up, big mistake. I paid $7.99 for these glasses. They only sell for like 9 or 10 Um, I took an offer on these, or I might have had them on sale. Um, $9.97, they were on sale for 40% off. Sold them for $9.97 plus shipping. My customer got really upset because she paid $14 in shipping and it was going to take a long time. Well, they were going smart post. Um, what she didn't understand in this particular item and the destination it was going that it was going to cost her like 20 something dollars to do priority and it was like 19 dollars she paid the cheapest rate um it was just she didn't understand the time frame but it did arrive on time it arrived you know on the date that it was supposed to arrive so there wasn't anything she could really say or do it got there and that's it she paid a very good price for them and she had the cheapest rate on shipping possible so uh, next up was VeggieTales. I always, uh, will check on these because some of them are real winners on the VeggieTales ones, um, just like Little Einstein's, um, CDs and DVDs. Some of them are real winners as well. Um, if you haven't watched some of my videos or you missed it, Between the Lions is an amazing one to pick up. I'm talking about amazing. If you see them, buy them all. Uh... I paid $3.99 for this Cape Cod hat. I just thought it was awesome. It's a shark bite hat, and it has the fake blood and all of that. Um, I don't remember if I got full asking price on that or not. No, uh, it was on sale. So it went for $20.97 plus shipping. So if you want to uh, look at that like relative to what that means, uh, let's look at the Cape Cod hat. So I paid $3.99 for it. Purchase price was $20.97. They paid their shipping. My shipping was only $2.60 because it went out for less than 8 ounces. There's my fees. And my profit on that $3.99 hat was $15.42. That's pretty decent profit for a simple item, I think. Okay, next. This came in the Palette Reject stuff. This is a Cinnabar uh, Barbie. She was a part of a, a special series. And uh, this actually sold and went to San Antonio. She was brand new, but the box was really damaged. Just really, really damaged. And um, so I priced her. I priced her correctly. But... Um, it went on sale for $23.97 plus shipping. It didn't have a whole lot of shipping because it only went to San Antonio. So they got to pay a really cheap rate. It was like $6 and something. <clears throat> I put a buy cost on that of about $5 uh, for uh, like tax purposes since I bought it in a big box of stuff. I, I put a value on it of $5. Uh, this also came out of the Palette Rejects. Um, this was an indoor basketball hoop. It went on sale for $23.97 plus shipping, so almost $20 in shipping. I think I did make a little money on the shipping uh, just because what they paid was, yeah, I had a $5 buy cost on that, $23.97. They paid $18.70 in shipping. I paid $12.60 in shipping with my eBay sh discount, so profit came out at $19.69. So I made a little money off of the shipping. That helped a lot for the item being on sale. Those, those discounts, I love them. I had these MBTs for quite a while. I always pick them up. If you're going to start picking up MBTs, you need to be careful and watch for dry rot around the foam. You need to rub your finger across it because it'll look just fine. And you won't notice until you get home. Um, that it's all rotted out and it just crumbles, that foam will crumble. So when you're at the store, rub your finger across the uh, this part of the foam. This part right here, let me see if we can get the picture bigger for you. This part here, 
the gray will dry rot and fall apart. So uh, be careful when you're buying MBTs. I always pick them up. They're a great purchase. Um, they're generally $6.99, $7.99. Um, and um, I sell them for about $39.95. This pair I had for a while, and they weren't in the best condition. They had some marks that were on the toes. Um, like, uh, since they were suede, they had the typical, like, watermarks and that kind of stuff. I believe these went on sale. No, they went full price, $29.95. Cool. Plus shipping. And the MBTs up to, like, a size 8, I believe, will fit in a regional A box. I think it's a 7 or 8. Will fit perfectly in a regional A. <clears throat> Sold another one of those little pouches organizers this came out of the palette rejects just a tire assembly um sold for 16.95 plus shipping went in a flat rate padded envelope and net profit on that was 12.22 i put a buy cost on it of 250 next up here's a chopping blade that came off that cuisinart food processor $24.95 plus shipping. I love, love, love doing food processors. They're like one of my favorite things to part out because all of those pieces are essential for the unit to work. So if that locking lid breaks and chips, that machine's not going to work. If this chopping blade chips or gets that um, crack in it that it'll get like a pressure crack, that there's bacteria that'll form in the that's you can't use them anymore if your bowl gets cracked if you're i mean those all of those pieces to the machine are essential to them working the chopping blades everything else um like the little chopping discs i mean awesome food processors fun fun to part out these are my giant hug fun chickens. I paid $4.99 for each one of them. They went on um, they went on sale for $35.97, which I think is still a great price. And uh, plus shipping. And you can see my profit on that was $18.63. They sold really quickly. I think they were only up a week or two. And they made noise. I put a video in the uh, description. Uh, I am down to three dog collars on Amazon out of the, I think, 90 I sent in. And I'm down to, I think, three on eBay. So, yay! That was a great buy. It took me, I guess, six months to work through them, and they're gone. Um, I'll have to add up the profits on those at some point. Um, I paid $5.99 for each one of those Kong collars that I bought. I uh, sold another one of these. I sold several of these in the month of um, May. I believe I sold probably about eight of them. I'm not going to go through each one of them, but those are those little knockoff Fitbits. I had a, uh, I guess a fellow reseller who watches my videos um, purchased one of these from me, and they had seen in one of my videos that I mentioned that they were kind of crappy, you know, that they weren't the best. Well, she sent me a message letting me know that, um, Sometimes people buy items like this for maybe their kids or if they have a special needs child um, that she had a daughter that really wanted a Fitbit, but she knew that she wasn't going to keep up with it or, and my eight-year-old did the same thing. She wanted a Fitbit, but I gave her one of these and she literally used it for like two hours and then it was like on the floor. So she said, um, sometimes parents buy these types of items so that they're not paying a whole bunch of money for something that their kid wants and they just know that they're not going to use or take care of or that it's just going to serve its purpose and they're not going to notice the difference. So yeah, thanks for watching my videos. I've had this for a really long time. I paid way too much money for it. I think I paid $12.99 for it like a year or two ago. Um, I had it listed for quite a while. It went finally, finally, finally sold. Uh, for twelve ninety five, it was on sale. Twelve ninety twelve. I'm sorry, twenty nine ninety seven on sale. Um, plus shipping. I was just happy to see it gone. And even then, with um, the high buying cost, I still made a hundred percent ROI. 
I still profited the money I paid for it. This was my big fantastic bolo. Let me get over there. <clears throat> And people have been finding them, and they are selling them. Angie Martin found an American Mills, I believe it was a monkey? Uh, and she sold it for 100 bucks. People have been finding them, and they're finding success. They've uh, been finding the Squishables. Um, <coughs> sorry. They've been finding um, some of the other smaller American Mills. Um, and the smaller ones don't sell for as much as the giant ones, but they do still sell for more than typical plush. So I paid $7.97 for this American Mills turtle uh, when I was with Chad and Kim. It was the very first place that we went. It was the very first item that I picked up. And um, this tur turtle is very rare. This is what the American Mills tag looks like. And um, I sold it for $275 the day after I listed it, um, it went to Canada. And um, now that I've put out the Bolo, people have been finding them. And I think it's amazing that they're um, having success with that. And I think it's a great Bolo. It's my favorite kind of Bolo. It's the one that it's not going to saturate the market. You know, 100 people aren't going to go out today and 100 people come back with them. It's just something to have in the back of your mind that when you see a giant animal that looks like a big pillow, um, take a look at it because you just never know. So that was my big sale, my big score. I was so excited about it. I think I talked about it like 10 different times on 10 different shows, but yay, you'd talk about it too if it was yours. Uh, I had picked up these uh, vessel rechargeable lamps. They were $2.99, but uh, I had no way of testing them. They didn't have the charger, so I put it very big, no charger, untested, pre-owned, untested, does not have the charger. Down here I also put it was untested, um, and they sold finally on sale for $23.37 plus shipping and they must work because I didn't hear anything from the customer. Uh, these came out of the Palette Rejects. It's just a receiving blanket. Um, sold for uh, $14.96. I believe it was a best offer. Plus shipping. Um, I put a buy cost on those of, I think, $2.00. It was a $10 profit, $10.66. I put a buy cost of $250. Purchase price $14.96 plus shipping, and they shipped out for $355. So not a bad profit, $10. Mm -hmm. Um, just to set what on those little watches, my net profit on those little watches is um seven dollars because I have them for $8.95 plus shipping and a buy cost of a dollar. I had a whole bunch of them out of the palette reject stuff and 781 is my profit on each one of those. So that's that's not a bad profit on a little uh, item that you could buy from Alibaba if you wanted to. I like saying Alibaba. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, next up. Uh, this is a pusher that also uh, came from that Cuisinart uh, food processor. $12.95 plus shipping. So if you think we're now in the, I did 25, 25, and 12. So we are up in the over $60 range on parts for that processor right now. I uh, sold another one of these cases. I sell them for $9.95 plus shipping. I am getting down to, I need to relook at this. I don't think that I have 18 left. And I've sold way more than seven. Uh, there was a point in time that um, if you ever do a variation listing, it is very important. If you don't typically do good till canceled, when you have a variation listing or a multi-quantity listing, make sure you list it as good till canceled. If that item ends, it's going to reset all of your numbers. So everything that you sold, 
it's going to replenish it when you relist it and it's going to mess you up. So make sure that you do good till canceled listings. When you do variation or multi-quantity listings, it's very, very important. I uh, sold another pair of my problem pants, the ones that are kind of small for their size. But you can see right here, it says it right when they have to select their size, it says exactly what the waist inches is. And if they don't have that size waist, I'm sorry for that. There's no way that these are children's. Somebody tried to tell me, oh, they're children's sizes. And I'm like, no, they're not because they are a 34 inch length. I had got a whole bunch of these in the last thing of palette and the very last palette rejects that I purchased. Um, I sold uh, 10 at once for $19.95 plus uh, just one shipping cost. And then I've sold a couple of them over time. I just have them priced at $195 plus shipping or I have them priced at $4.95 free shipping. I mean $3.95 or $4.95 free shipping. Um, and they're not a huge profit, but they are um, definitely feedback uh, pumpers and also, you know, sales number, you know, to help offset any, you know, you just want your percentages up. So I don't mind having things like this particular little item that's going to fill my feedback and help with my percentages on on time shipping and sales. Um, quantities. Here's a the other I sold the um, yeah that was for the lid. It went for seven ninety five free shipping. I've upped the price on the lid when I replenished um, because the lid's kind of important, and I didn't for some reason price it high enough the first go round. So I went ahead and upped the price to $9.95 for the lid. I have the pitcher at $24.95, the holder at $9.95, and then the little brew basket at $7.95. But um, any pieces that are essential to the item working, you can kind of raise the price on. Uh, I found another one of the convection ovens at Savers. And so I went against what my normal is and didn't part it out. I sold it. My profit on it was 37. Yeah, $37. I had a buy cost of $6.99. I couldn't believe it was $6.99. Purchase price, it went on a, a best offer for $53.97 plus shipping. And I profited, like I said, $37.45. Amazing. It was a quick sale. I think it sold in a week. And um, done and done. Normally, I would have parted it out. I would have taken the basket and taken the thing. But I'm trying very hard to stop doing that for everything. It's not necessary. Unless I can make, like, the um, food processor, where I'm going to make probably $200 or more on the parts when I could only sell the whole thing for 50 bucks, that's when I'm going to part it out. But this one, um, parting it out was just going to be stupid. But for some reason, I do that where I'm in part out mode and I just part out everything. When I didn't need to do that, I should have just, unless I'm going to triple, quadruple my money, I need to just keep it whole and sell it, you know. And so that I'm working on that, changing my mindset on that. Another one of the watches. Uh, I had a couple of these. These came out of the palette rejects as well, and I couldn't find them when I sold them. So I had to actually buy a cus this customer a pair on Amazon and have them shipped to her. Um, so I didn't have to cancel. And then now that Patrick has gone through the inventory again, I know where everything is. And now I know where three pairs of those are. Um, and I won't have a problem finding my things anymore. It's amazing. If you're not already doing this, you need to go ahead and set up a system. Um, so that way, when you have your sales, you can have this custom label area. You do that by hitting customize and saying that you want to have a custom label. 
and in the custom label put your number for your box where your item is and then when you have to ship you can just print out your cell like your page if you print it out it'll have a nicer version of this and you can just go out to wherever you keep your stuff and pull out your items makes it so easy so use the custom label field and put where your stuff is and then when you sell it you can find it so now i don't have that lost item problem anymore now that we've gone through the uh the inventory again okay next uh, i sold another one of the cases this was a great score okay this is creative memories i talked about these on the show on the stew and um i talked about them in my haul video when i bought them i am 60 dollars into this item uh for all of the things that i bought they were 3.99 a piece and um i had 14 items so i was in it for 60 bucks i went ahead and accidentally put these on sale 2.99 is not a bad price for this who was bought who kept trying to buy my product were other resellers okay um, $2.99 is not a bad price and I would have just sat and waited on it but there was some circumstances that made me change that pro thought process first um, my patio has started leaking and I don't know if you paid attention to the news but over about a month's time it rained and rained and rained our May was the rainiest May in history in Texas and it just rained nonstop and we flooded and our lake is full and my patio started leaking again and I had some things that got ruined and um, you know things I had to pull because they were already listed and they got wet so these accidentally got put on sale when I was running my 40% off sales and I had several offers that came through and they were all coming from other resellers um, and they only wanted to pay about $150, $160. And I just really didn't want to do that because I knew if I waited, I could get full price. But since it had started with the rain, I was really worried about these getting damaged. I didn't want to move them around a lot. I didn't want the cellophane to somehow get, you know, torn. And um, I, I definitely didn't want them to get damaged or wet. So I went ahead and kept them on sale. And fortunately, they sold. They were 40% off. And sorry, I scrolled up and I lost my place they sold for the sale price of 179.97 um plus shipping and i think that's great i'm 60 dollars into them they got to their place i didn't take a best offer on them i just really didn't want to go lower than the sale price and you can see that my profit on this particular item 96 dollars and 86 cents goodbye that was goodbye yes goodbye um this hardy boys set i have had forever i bought them for 4.99 i definitely overpaid they went and were shipped to amazon probably two years ago and for some reason they got stranded and they were just sitting at them at amazon forever they weren't for sale they were just sitting there stranded I eventually called them back and then they were just sitting here for a long time and then I finally went ahead and listed them and they sold yay uh, they went um, on sale for $14.96 uh, plus shipping and I was just kind of glad that they were gone they um, they just turned out to be a bunk buy I uh, sold another tablet case. Uh, these Pokemon cards came out of the Palette Reject stuff. Um, they had a liquidation sticker on them, I guess, because the box had gotten damaged. But everything was sealed, so they were eBay new. I sold them for $22.46 um, on sale and uh, plus shipping. Another watch. 
Then I sold the base. Normally the bases are like the things that sit around the longest. The motor base on any machine you part out is going to probably be the last thing you sell. But actually this one sold right away. I was totally shocked. Um, I took a uh, I took an offer on it of twenty one ninety five and plus shipping and you can see the shipping was pretty significant. Um, I have a buy cost on this. Let's see, of two dollars. I don't remember what I paid for that machine. It's I don't know, $9.99 or $12.99. I don't remember. So for each one of the pieces, um, I think I have priced out at like a dollar, and then the main one I put it to. So profit on just that one part, $14.17. So I made back my original purchase price plus all of the other parts that I sold. So now we were at $65 plus this one. Now we're at $80, $86 on solds on that Cuisinart so far. Star Wars pieces, you can see I was doing cell similar. This was for the money <laughs> condition. These are plastic, so they're definitely not creased or crinkled. Uh, but that's sold for $3.95 plus shipping. <laughs> that's for the Star Wars operation, and it's the little pieces. I would have sold that all together, but it was missing uh, pieces. It didn't have all the body parts. Uh, Looney Tunes uh, Monopoly property cards, $6.95 plus shipping another watch. Paw Patrol. This was for a game and it didn't have all of the pieces. So I uh, just took the little movers out and put them up as uh, put them up uh, for sale for $8.95. I had paid $1.99 for the whole game. This Krups machine. Boy, that was definitely a sleeper. This one is a uh, coffee maker and it went to I don't remember where this was getting shipped to. Somewhere in Europe, it was like Yugoslavia or uh, somewhere in that area. And um, they paid up for this item. Uh, I paid $6.99 for it. Let me see. I paid $7.99 for it. I sold it for $79.95. They paid $68 in shipping because it had to be shipped priority mail. I paid $55 in shipping. So my discount gave me a little bit of leeway, covered some fees. My net profit on that machine was $70.34. Let me see where it went. I don't see it here. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, that was definitely a great buy. This Krups Compact Therm uh, is actually pretty rare. They don't come up very often, and they're definitely desirable. They're made in Germany, and my customer is going to be really surprised because on my listing, I actually said that it didn't have the carafe lid. I forget to look for those things, and I've been trying to remember, make sure it has the carafe lid if I buy anything that has carafes. I thought I specifically remembered that this one did, that I was like, oh, yay, there's the lid. But then when I brought it inside, I didn't see the lid. Um, and I listed it without the lid. I sold this on a Friday. I was going to ship it on a Saturday, but I decided to hold off until that Monday because something just really was there saying, no, there was a lid. There was a lid. Lo and behold, I found it. So my customer is actually going to probably be really happy that it came with the carafe lid. And so it's going to keep the coffee warm inside. Yay. I paid $1.99 for this. It was just uh, something I was going to send off to Amazon. And then uh, I think it was restricted or something like that because of the battery. It has like a little battery and it's probably restricted because of that. So I just went ahead and listed it on eBay for $9.95 plus shipping. This was a tip to an electric cookie press, very similar to like the super, uh, super shooter, like little cookie uh, machine. This is the tip. Customer left me good feedback, was like, this is exactly what I needed. So uh, that had came out of the palette rejects. And um, 
So I went ahead and parted it out. This is for the other mixing uh, blender. So $24.95 on that. This came out of Palette Rejects. Uh, these went on sale for... Oh no, I took a best offer on these. Or $14. Um, plus shipping. I don't know why I did that. I think I I just felt like taking the offer because <laughs> uh, it was quite a lot less than um, my buy price. But some days I'm just more nice about taking offers. Uh, another tablet case. This I've had a long time. I didn't even list it. It was like in the shed forever and then it had to fell back behind a shelf. Patrick found it when he was cleaning up the patio and I went ahead and brought it in. Uh, got to looking it up and I'm like, holy crap, these are like 50, 60, 70 bucks. I went ahead and uh, put new batteries in it. If anything you do, go to Amazon and buy you a big old back stock of the batteries that get used they are the 2032s i believe i don't think this is what i bought i don't think this is the right number it says 2032 and i think i bought two some other ones anyway buy you the batteries that go in they're the the big cell ones the thick ones those for some reason if you say in your listing it has brand new batteries. The people know that those batteries are kind of expensive and they're hard to find, but you can buy them in bulk from China. And just saying that you have new batteries in there makes your listing all the more better. Um, I'll even put it in the title if I have enough space that it has new batteries. So yeah, this totally sold um, for full price within a couple days of it being listed i was shocked so yeah i just had money laying around things that aren't listed are just money laying around this came out of the palette reject stuff uh i sold that item uh, on sale for 23.97 um plus shipping and i think i had a buy cost on it of five dollars these pants I bought from um, Academy. They had all of their stuff that was on clearance for $10. They had that half price. So I paid $4.98 for some mossy oak uh, hunting pants. I thought what I had was a stock photo when in actuality that it was Academy's photo. Um, I had done a Google search and I thought that I had the stock photo. I got a Vero from Academy for photo. So um, I went ahead and re, I had already sold this item when I got the Vero, but I um, had an, another size. It was a variation listing. So they pulled the listing. I went ahead and relisted um, only I put my own photos um, that I just took of the pants folded up and they sold the next day. So um, that's another listing you'll actually see in June's haul video because uh, they just sold the other day. I uh, sold another one of the collars. These are Rugrats curtains. Uh, the customer had made me an offer uh, that was just too low. And I didn't respond. Then I got an email uh, from the customer because somebody had bought it full price. But they only bought three. And I look back and I'm like, oh, that was the customer that had made that really low offer. But they had made me an offer for four. They only bought three at full price. And then I got an email saying, I bought these at full price. Uh, when are you going to ship these? And they shipped when they were supposed to ship. She bought them on the 25th. And they shipped on the 26th. So I'm not sure if it just didn't send her the update or what happened. Um, but she was really upset that I didn't respond to her offer. And I told her, I was like, oh, well, these shipped out. You know, here's the tracking number. I went ahead and, um, because I had sent her a message asking her if she was aware that she had only bought three because her original offer was four. She said yes, that she only needed three and this and this. 
I went ahead and just shipped her the four of them because I was really concerned since she was already kind of cranky. Um, I was concerned about the feedback. So I went ahead and just shipped her the fourth panel and sent her that message saying, you know, oh, well, I, I didn't get a response from you uh, early enough before I shipped out the item. So I went ahead and just sent you all of the panels. Um, and she was very happy and I had a big capital. Thank you so much with exclamation points. So um, that turned out really great. I paid five ninety nine dollars uh, for two panels. So for four, it would have been um, $11.98. And you can see she paid $44.85 plus shipping. They went in a flat rate padded mailer. And then I sold the Lion King panel. And I had these individually, you know, $14.95 per panel. Because if you go to the store, they sell curtains by the panel. Um, so I sold my very last one of the Lion King curtain panel. The other person that had bought the other one uh, was making a blanket out of it. And I believe this person as well was making some type of craft with the curtain panel. Because curtain panels are actually way thicker than like a sheet. So fabric wise, they're a better fabric um, than like a, a sheet because the sheets are going to be thinner. These Danner boots I bought when I was with Chad and Kim. I picked them up for $9.99. It was the very first time I've ever even seen Danner boots. Um, you can see that they, they were not great. They had this, um, uh, grass that I couldn't get off of them. I sprayed it down and tried to clean them and I was just like, forget it. I'm not putting a lot of time into this. They also had some water stains, stuff like that. So I put that in the condition that the soles have a lot of life. They were worn through wet grass and they need a good scrubbing. They're clean inside. They don't have any smells and there's water spots. Um, they sold for forty-seven forty-five was a best offer plus shipping, you can see they were putting it so it was $60 even, and I paid $9.99 for them. I think that's a good turnaround. They sold very quickly too. And so my profit on that particular buy, $31.65. Those are the kind of buys I like. I have, um, all of these little extra curlers, whenever I took all of my um, hot curlers and said, I'm done with hot curlers, I took all of the rollers off and I just put them as individual listings for the large, the mediums, and the smalls. And they just sell. They sell over time. Um, they're easy to ship and um, they're kind of a feedback filler and another transaction. And um, it's just a multi quantity listing, it just keeps on selling. Here's the baby cook. I always buy baby cooks. Uh, I part them out. I always part them out because if you look at the research, you're going to make a heck of a lot more money parting out that item than you are selling it. The people that want these, they buy them new. What ends up happening is they spend 60, 80, 100 bucks on them and then eventually something breaks and they don't want to spend 60, 80, 100 bucks on them again. So sold the little chopping blade, $9.95 plus shipping. I had paid $9.99 for the entire unit. So that paid me back. And then everything else is profit. These sold one time for $30 and then the customer didn't pay. And then they sold again on sale for $29.97 plus shipping. And then the customer did pay. So yay! Um you, you got to check on running shoes because they are just super duper duper expensive when you buy them new. So some of them are, if you can get them in great condition used, they're really easy sales. So $7.99 sold for $29.97 plus shipping. Um, profit on that $18.34. We're coming up on the end, guys. We're coming up on the end. I'm trying to hurry because my dad is coming. Um... So I'm sorry if I'm not going into as much detail as I normally do because um, I'm kind of in a rush. I bought this for, uh, it's a Logitech Wingman steering wheel and foot pedals. Um, you can use them on the computer. You can use them on PlayStation. Uh, I paid $4.99 for it. So 
not a lot of money. It's sold on sale for $27.94 plus shipping. So you can see my profit on that, $18.74 per good. I'm dwindling down on how many fashion types I have left. I like that it's suggesting this because those are all mine. That's mine, that's mine, that's mine. Uh, so these sold $9.95. Uh, I bought these for 99 cents. I cleared out a whole shelf at the Goodwill. I bought like 30 pairs and I'm down to just a couple left now. And they're a really good filler as well. You can see this customer bought two pairs and my profit was $12.65. So I make $6 and some change in profit on a really simple item. Ab Circle DVD. Um, I had originally intended this for, I don't know why I bought this actually. I think it was a mistake. Um, but the price on this has actually jumped up quite a bit. I listed mine for the wrong money. I'm not sure what happened. Oops, that's not how you spell circle. But I priced mine too low, and I'm not sure why I did that. This one went to France, $9.95, plus shipping to France. My profit on this was $6.14, and the only reason why I had that much profit on it was because I made $2 and something on the shipping because of my discount. So... $6.14, which is not a bad profit for a DVD. It's like, I mean, how hard is it to list a DVD? Unfortunately, this item sold for $14.95. It was one of these chess pieces, and these accidentally got put out in the garage sale. There was a box of items that were listed on eBay that accidentally the whole box went out and all of these that were left got sold. Makes me sad. <laughs> Pat, but Patrick is uh, the one that sold them. I wasn't even out there and um, kind of sucked, but it's okay. I had to cancel this order as I'm not able to, uh, not having the stock. So I tried really hard to find another one, but there just wasn't one. Uh, another collar, more rollers, the little spatula. I took a best offer on this one, I believe. Yeah, $7.55 plus shipping. So it came out to $10.95. And um, so on something like that, like the other piece, since it's not such an essential piece, I put a buy cost on that of a dollar. Profit came out to $5.74. The next thing, the last thing I sold of the month was this Jungle Book Christmas ornament. Customer left me feedback saying that the item was undamaged but that the box had gotten crushed during shipping. Um, must have had something heavy that fell on it because, I mean, the box was a box. It was a typical shipping box. Um, but good thing it didn't get broken. I paid, did I pay five two? I paid $2.99 for it. Uh, $10 was the purchase price plus shipping. So my profit was $5.91. So that's how my eBay did for May. It was a very good month. It was the best month I've had all year. Um, If you look at my, my, my profit chart got messed up somehow. I don't know how that happens. I wish I could show you the whole year, but it got messed up. Um, but it was the, the best month that I've had all year long. So that's great. My Amazon sales are down because I haven't sent in a shipment in months. 
uh, my sales for Mar uh, for May was five hundred and eight dollars, and I I haven't sent in a shipment. Oh, when was the last shipment I sent in? My last shipment closed out April twenty first. I sent seven things. I don't know. Yeah, I sent seven things, and all those were was DVDs. It was seven, like, DVDs and CDs. It was media, and it was just in an envelope. That's the last thing I sent. So um, my profits on Amazon was, oh, hang on. I actually have it here. And I'm going to show you a neat report. $250.67 was my profits. I'm going to show you how to pull this report. What I did here is I pulled a report for all of my transactions for the month of May from Amazon. And then I made, I'm going to try to increase the size. I made a column called COGS. And what I did is I went in next to the actual sell price of the item. You can see it's called product charges. I put a minus the cost of goods and I just ran down and did that when I got to the bottom I put a little profit and I made an auto sum that just means it adds it up and I just took these two columns and I went all the way up and it basically has my sold price minus all my Amazon fees including my store cost and then including reimbursements and other things like that minusing my cost of goods and I got my profit number for the month. I'm going to make a video showing how to run this report because I think it's a really important thing. It's an easy way for you to do some accounting for free and not having to pay. Uh, I'm going to show you how to run that report real quick. If you go into your payments and you go to your transactional view, you can put your statement dates right here as I did for May. All it does is it brings up all your transactions. And if you press this little button as download, it's going to send you a text file. You need to open up that file in Amazon as a comma delimited a spreadsheet, and it's going to bring it up like this. And then all you got to do is enter that one little column, and boom, you've got all of your accounting tracking that you needed to do for that month. I think it's amazing. I discovered it uh, about a month ago. Anyway. So profits for Amazon was two fifty sixty seven, half like normal. I had uh, two sales on Bonanza that totaled twenty four dollars minus costs of goods and fees came out at a profit of about fifteen bucks. So that puts me at a profit of one thousand five hundred and eighty five dollars for the month of May. Um, yeah, so pretty good pretty pretty good considering the fact that let's see what were my listings like in the month of may on the second i listed five two on the third i didn't list again until the 17th and then i listed 11 things on the 19th eight on the 20th four on the 22nd and then that's all the listing i did in the month of may that's sad but I've been listing like a crazy person from the 6th, 7th, 8th, and then I listed 30 items yesterday. So I'm doing much better in June than I did in May. Um, so yeah, so those are all my sales for the month of May. I will try to do my June updates really soon, so that way I'm on time. I'm only a week behind. Um, and that's it. So sorry I had to rush through this one, even though it was an hour and... 15 minutes. Sorry I had to rush through this. I normally like to give a lot more detailed information about each individual item, but it was a hundred things. It was like, yeah, 88, 88 orders, 102 items. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate all the support. Um, everything's been going great with eBay's and Bacon. I uh, it will be ending out on Friday, but I may bring it back as a regular show. Uh, make sure to join us on Tuesday 
for the reseller stew at noon central standard time on my channel pinching pesos tanya said that she got some amazing finds today and she wants to talk about them on tuesday um so anyway, everybody have a really, really great week. I hope you're having some really awesome sales. I know it's a little slow right now. It's typical, typical for this time. It's going to be okay. You keep on listing and you'll be ready whenever people start buying again. Uh, love you guys. See ya.